Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. You can listen to The Mike O'Mara Show at MikeO'MaraShow.com. Well, what have we here? Uh, it's a podcast. Fine. And what excitement we have today. It's The Mike O'Mara Show with Mike O'Mara and Rob Spiewak. Now, here's Mike. You know, you notice little things uh, about the show um, because we've changed some of our elements with the... Uh, with the cast of characters changing recently, and uh, I just realized you sneak in a Regis Philbin. Fine. Well, then, fine. That's actually, I worked backwards from Regis for the whole show open. I want to um, just have that in there. <laughs> one of the things that uh, we're doing on the new incarnation of the show, as well as uh, the new platform, which I have to say right off the bat, thanks to uh, the great and powerful Oz, thanks to uh, Carla for just uh, exemplary customer service and letting everybody uh, get through the uh, first day of, uh, of this and uh, just getting us up and running again, which is really spectacular. And uh, I, I think that I owe a debt of gratitude to everybody associated with this. And I also think that our listeners are very squeaky, and that's good because it makes sure that they get what they need. And then I find them very unbelievably supportive after they get what they require. And that's a good thing because it lets us know what we need to do, and then it validates the effort that we put forward. So, Who I is the squeakiest listener, do you think, if you had to single one out? Um, it's interesting you ask that. Um, and I'm going to say perhaps, <laughs> yes. uh, and this is a great segue into introducing our guest for the show today. Thank you. <laughs> perhaps it is an individual that may have used the name in, uh, no, see, I'm going to out him if I do that. I can't do that. Hmm. It's a, but let's just say it's an individual our guest might know. Oh. That's all I wanted to say. Okay. Initials Go MR. on. Oh, MR. Ah, yeah. uh, oh. Rhymes with Burl. And I'm not even going to assign any pronouns to it. I know that's the hot thing to do right now. Uh, but let's just say things, it's listener MR. One of the things we're doing <laughs> on the new show, we're going to have a, uh, a, a, a rotating uh, guest chair. And, yes. Uh, and the, I was putting together a list. Rob was putting together a list of, uh, you know, people that have been on the show before that we'd love to have again. And this guy came to the top of the list, uh, both of our lists, because we love him, and he's open for us in a live show. He is, I think, really now, now that James Brown has passed, he is the hardest working man <laughs> in show business. And uh, you can hear uh, him on, periodically, on 98 Rock in Baltimore. You can see him uh, at comedy clubs across the country. You should see him in comedy clubs across the country, because he's great. I'll tell you that right now. As I was saying, uh, you, you can see him at uh, comedy clubs uh, across the country, and uh, and he's a friend of the show and has been for a uh, a good long time. And uh, we welcome Rob Mayer to the show. Hey, Rob, Rob. It's great to have you. Thank you, fellas. Anything uh, new with you guys recently? <laughs> <laughs> Not much. Not much. Uh, it's been uh, it's been a, last week was an interesting week. This is a. This is a stable week this week where yeah. I think everybody like is that. kind of settled Well, when into... you think stable, you think Rob Mayer. Let's yes. get him to. 100%. That's <laughs> you. Slow and steady. That's what you're all about. And, you know, I, I think that I – there are people that I follow. There are people that I am a fan of. And then there are people like you, Rob Mayer, that I root for. And Thank I think you, I said it to you last time. Um, it's fun for me to watch the comedy career uh, continue to grow and your relationship with the very funny uh, David Keckner and, and the fact that uh, you guys have really killed it and you just played a sold-out houses around the country. Uh, this coming weekend, you're going to be up at uh, uh, Ledyard at the Mohegan Sun, a uh, fabulous casino uh, that has taken... Many, many dollars for me because it's about 40 <laughs> minutes from my hometown. And uh, back in the day, the uh, the Indian Casino was, uh, I remember my brother-in-law having a conversation with him because we used to like to go to Atlantic City. And he sure. was down, at that point, he was down in D.C. and I was down in D.C. And somehow I got on the phone with him right before we were going home for Thanksgiving, and he said, I have two words for you, <laughs> Indian Casino. 
Mm. And at that time, as we were driving the 40 to 45 minutes from my hometown of Glastonbury, Connecticut, to a town called Ledyard, uh, that's a ye old town name for it. It does <laughs> sound like it, yeah. It was, uh, I, in my mind's eye, this is how long ago it was, envisioned uh, like one of those aluminum warehouses that they have those yeah. uh, those ten yeah. with with maybe some card tables uh i had no idea as i came around the corner and saw this absolutely gorgeous hotel that this would be as big a deal and of course over the years it's grown and grown and grown and this is one of the very first i think really one of the very first uh, Native American casino operations in the United States. It must have been so fantastic for you because people, it wasn't that long ago, if you lived in the D.C. area, the closest place to gamble was Atlantic City. Atlantic City, and it was so a drag. It was, it was a long drag Crappy drive. drive. And no if you've fun. got one 40 minutes outside and you got to get away from your mom, perfect. Yeah. and yeah. Uh, yeah, It's a long drive mom. home if you're losing. That's, Very it's, long. It's a tough drive home. <laughs> and I, I made that drive from uh, Atlantic City, New Jersey, to uh, to Washington, D.C. Uh, multiple times. And there's this little road outside of uh, Atlantic City. I'm sure both of you have been on it. It's called Route 40 in mm, Jersey. Beautiful. And it's just farmland. <laughs> and Picturesque. It's, yeah, beautiful. Uh, we got our dog Beluga there. Where they was a farm, but that was that after sold. a win, wasn't it? No, that was after. Wow, we what, a what what table game does that happen? Where you win a dog? <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's baccarat. What? Uh, nice. Where they uh, baccarat? <laughs> no cash given out. They give away pugs. Right. And it was man. And we're driving along, and I'm literally we we have uh, won on Saturday during the day, and then as the evening progresses. Uh, you lose more and more. You give as it Robert, back. As yeah. Robert De Niro said, they get it all. Mm -hmm. And that morning, we're driving back home, maybe that afternoon, because I had lingered. Lingy, <laughs> lungy. To see right, this is uh, room 206. Could I get a look? look late checkout? <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> and we lost. Didn't have any money. And then, you know, Carla and I are in the courtship phase, really, at that particular Still. point. Still. Absolutely. You never stop dating. <laughs> dating your loved one, Mike. Everybody knows that. <laughs> Always <a> courting, <laughs> clinging, longing, yearning, apologizing. <laughs> There's your show title. <laughs> yearning and apologizing will be the title of today's show. And she is, <laughs> she says, puppies. And I'm like, I, I, I didn't screech the brakes. I don't want to exaggerate it too much, but I pulled over, backed up and pulled down this driveway. And there were these, this litter of pugs in the backyard and a little pen. And I picked out uh, the dog. And then we had to figure out how we could get the uh, cash. And I was just tapped. I was tapped because I've lost that is what so sad. It, it was. Oh, <laughs> I've, my, my gambling losses have resulted in many Many, uh, many big problems for me. Uh, you know, back when I, now I should say, back when it was okay, it wasn't going to. Uh, I wasn't going to lose the home or anything like that. But at one point, during the peak of my degenerate gambling, I said to Carla, "I'll never forget it." In a high dollar slot area, I said, "It's okay. I'll sell the car," <laughs> and I did. <laughs> Oh my got, God! You've never said that before. Oh yeah, wow! Yeah. I got rid of. I wanted to get rid of it anyway because I didn't like it. Have you met uh, Shohei Otani's interpreter? <laughs> he is Shohei Otani's <laughs> yes. interpreter. He was helping me uh, in that during. Mike, that, if I can travel. share a, one of my favorite, I'd never heard about the car one, but this is one of my favorite gambling moments with you and Rob. I think you'll enjoy this tale. We had uh, just arrived into Iowa to visit our uh, our affiliate KCJJ, and there's a casino out there. Oh, I researched uh, it before we arrived. Yeah, and so we went there. Uh, we had a very brief dinner, as I recall, because Mike was itching to get in the casino. Mm. And immediately. Now, that's in, not fair. That's not. I mean, it wasn't like I was no, no, you rushing weren't rushed. everybody through the meal. No, but we did eat at the casino. <laughs> yes, we, yeah. Okay, so, so and I then Mike I mean, went. Was that right? I'm, I'm sorry, I have to stop because yeah, your memory of course. is better than mine. Yeah. So when you say Mike was itching to get to the casino, is. Uh, I probably I think the listeners know and yeah. you guys know 
that I like a uh, a good casino. And this sure. was kind of a an early meet and greet, right, for listeners to come out to wherever it was in I Iowa. I think and- it was mentioned last minute on KCJJ that we would be at the casino that night. I think okay. that's how it worked out. And so, Mike, right away, like seriously, when at, within a half hour of darkening the door of the casino, hit a big uh, uh, on the slot, a big win, like two thousand, maybe twenty five hundred dollars. Nice. And he was so excited that he took a picture of it and immediately called Carla and said, "Look what I did." And then, about a half hour later, <laughs> it was all gone, and he, Mike, was muttering as he walked out of the casino. Steve Bridges heard him say. I'm a degenerate gambler. I am. <laughs> but I uh, I compensate for that uh, yes. by now uh, watching degenerate gamblers. Uh, we have reached out to Vegas Matt, who has yes. a, a large presence online, and he is one of the guys that last night I watched him put, are you ready for this? Yes. 120 thousand dollars in a slot machine and then that's bounce. not one that can't be one poll that's what he's no, no, he for it's the, like a multitude of large denominations okay 15 11 25 and they get <sighs> down to uh where they're getting down to the the rock bottom uh well no i don't know no, i don't know what rock bottom is for this guy i don't know how he made his money i have a thousand questions for him he's very difficult to get in touch with i'm trying to reach out uh, I know that some of our listeners have contacts with this guy. I have a million questions. Some might say, hey, Mike, it's the Mike O'Mara show. Why don't you uh, interview celebrities or sports figures or uh, people in the news? Or for God's sakes, the show has a Washington, D.C. presence. Why not political leaders? I want to talk to Vegas Matt. Yeah. I want to know everything <laughs> about him. I want to know how he gets his money, where he gets his money, what his limits are. Is he actually questions. ahead? In life, he, and gambling? you know, he's got Rob. He's got to be ahead in life because well, I would guy think so. He's yeah. always throwing money in slot machines. True. But um, I think there's got to. I mean, I th- I've not watched him except for brief clips on the show. Mm-hmm. He's got to have an angle because you know, th- th- well, as I think we his said, angle is he. He's always talking about subscriptions and views and his YouTube presence and. Yeah. If you you know you can monetize yourself by uh, by having all the, the the connections to viewers and uh, supporters you know and ring the bell and all that stuff I uh, by the way do it for this show subscribe uh, yeah. to our YouTube channel and ring the bell ring that bell there uh, you go but this guy but I but I live vicariously through this guy especially when it's like the big dollars yeah where where if I'm watching somebody gamble an amount of money that I would never be willing to gamble ever. On any level, I uh, I get the anxiety yeah. that I would get if it was my own money, and I'm able to satisfy the itch. Now, when I say satisfy the itch, it's not to say that I really believe that if Carla came home one day and said, "I uh, I've decided to take a little cash out, let's go," I wouldn't. There would not be the slightest argument. She is totally the governor on. My desire to go out, it, it's its bad. It's really, really bad. I would go. But I satisfy the itch by watching these guys uh, gamble a lot of money online. It's methadone and for you. It's its nice. It's my methadone. Well, it I imagine is. they get, a, if he's getting that many views, whatever he lo- loses is offset a little bit by whatever he's making off That's of. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, so what it's, I'm thinking, but yeah. I'm interested in that math of that too, because that I would love to know that. I would love. Yeah. And he's got mm-hmm. his kid. Uh, that, that's so long. He's got a photographer, a cameraman. That's his with son him. is is Vegas Pat, right? They yeah. do. Uh, I think it's EJ is his son. Oh, I am if, if you with gamble this guy. the rights to that kid, that's that's views right there. <laughs> I'm is. watching that. It's his, worth it. So far, is, we've sold a car, gambled a kid, and won a dog. His kid's this a grown yeah, man. it's a fun show, Rob. <laughs> His kid is a grown man, and his kid gambles too. Yeah, uh, and it's this kind of this family television production that they do, and I'm watching this all the time, and uh, a little jealous. I'll be honest with you, mm. a little jealous. And then, and here would be the main question, and then we'll get to Rob because Rob's played a lot of uh, casinos mm-hmm. uh, yeah. with the uh, with touring with uh, David. Um, this guy. I wonder when any activity becomes 
work hmm. because it, you know when you love some something and then suddenly it's your job and one of the things one of the prime directives in this business is content 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 people demand it that's what keeps you going you got to provide it because people want it so this guy is in the casino i think on a daily basis and doing that and i would imagine no matter what the fun is the thrill of doing that at a certain point it might become work wouldn't you think wouldn't you think that would be the case i think that's true with everything i mean is he just doing slots or is he is slots. he varying to mm -hmm. so he's still thinking about which slot machine do i play do i go to the wheel of fortune what are our reviewers do we want do we want these wacky ones where it's like a panda or something i don't even know how you win right yeah. do we People want the traditional love, they love buffalo rob i've they seen the buffalo. buffalo i've played the buffalo yeah I'm, I played those slots, and I don't even. I think, oh, I just hit ten thousand. No, you won eleven dollars. Yeah, you don't figure. I can't the thing about figure these, out what I've won. Yeah. There, there's a concept in uh, slot machines called volatility, and high volatility, the buffalo, the panda, uh, dragon link, those type of things. They're mm -hmm. all what. A, why are you laughing? Because I know them all. Because you know dragon link. That's all. That's How many just... different slot machine games could you rattle off? All right, um, you challenged <laughs> could, me. Could you do twenty five? Um, mm. Hey, let's let's gamble. Over under is <laughs> seventeen and a half. Do you want the over or the under, Rob? <laughs> I'll take the over on that. All right, I, I guess I, I got like, the under. I like the the simple ones. Okay, uh, so I like double diamond. Mm -hmm. I like top dollar. Yeah, I like Dragon Link. Uh, but I've never won on Dragon Link. I've never. But you like that. it, yeah, and um, you know it. You're aware of it. You have a crush on it. It's never I, really. The, the, Love the, you back. The uh, there's one where it's got a uh, a triple feature on it, but it's a it's a low volatility game. Low mm -hmm. volatility meaning the old fashioned slots like seven seven seven, right. that type of stuff. Yeah, Dragon Link, the Panda game. Rob's talking about. Yep. They have all these multiple layer, and you're really playing ultimately for a bonus. Mike, have you played? Guess. Have you played Crazy Rich Asians? <laughs> <laughs> that's the, the i have i have too and it's and they the, the slot players will tell you <laughs> avoid the crazy rich age. that slot players will say yes. any any slot machine associated with a television show or a movie bad 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 yes. wheel of fortune one of the one of the uh big winners for the right. casino for years and years uh, yeah and years. I, they give me money i lost ten thousand on the alf slot machine back in the day Ooh. yeah yeah, well, yeah so old school. In, when when you go, when you you'll be in uh, Ledyard. Yeah, uh, this it's coming Unicastle, weekend. I think. Is there a different one, or is there two different, or is it just named something different? I don't know. I don't know. There, there's there's Foxwoods and the Mohegan right. Sun. Where yeah. you're going to be? It's the Mohegan Sun for sure. It's yeah. the Mohegan Sun. Mm. Only Foxwoods has the song though. Have a ball. <laughs> it's so fun. If they, they had it for a long time. If you can locate it, Rob, it's somewhere yes. out yeah. there. Have right. a ball. <laughs> so it's for the wonder of it all. Where they make it I, I like it. magical. <laughs> yes. yeah. I was just in live in in Philly because I went to I was at WrestleMania and they have a casino right by the stadium. So were you ah, working? I was were there you working at WrestleMania. No, we were just just hanging out. Me and I Justin thought you were competing. Eric. I was. I am the WWE champion. <laughs> Good the for you, Rob. Very, very was, busy. Did the person. 98 Rock Morning Show have any kind of presence up there? Uh, when no, you were we there? just. I just bought tickets uh, 10 months ago thinking I probably wouldn't even be able to make it, but I would just sell them. And then it turns out that was available and it's in Philly. Cool. It was cool. easy there. But I so I'm just coming off a casino experience. So mm -hmm. I'm, I played mostly blackjack, which I, slots are my generally my weakness, but blackjack. We had a good. Two rounds. The first round pre the event, which I was up four hundred, and the second round post event, which I gave back four hundred, which I now famously were dealt aces and I split them, and then I hit a ten and a nine, and somehow I lost twenty five bucks on those two hands. Damn, so, man. Yeah, so wow. that's the dealer. The that's dealer had the dealer. a two showing. Dealer flips over an eight, eleven, or excuse me, an ace. And I'm thinking, well, the math is going to be tricky because, and then she <laughs> yeah. flipped over an eight, which meant the math was easy. Two plus eleven plus eight is twenty one. Is just you know, you're you're, you're a loser, Rob. So. There's yeah, nothing yeah. worse it playing blackjack worst. when that dealer throws down four cards Ugh. and gets a twenty one. Yeah. There's nothing. It's just that made, evil. And, right. uh, and then, how do you yeah. sleep at night? Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. I love and then though, they have that, that attitude Rob... where it's like. 
Yeah. Yeah. Hold mm -hmm. the hands up. Yeah. I love yeah. that Rob says, and this goes through my mind because invariably, I don't know if you know this, Rob, I used to occasionally take a drink. Uh, mm. And in the casino. Heard rumors. Yeah. In the casino, when you say the math is tricky, that's when you have to lean forward and start thinking. Because right. that could be a one or an 11. How yeah. are we going to do this? I mean, this? come on. What am I, a computer? <laughs> oh, by, uh, by the way, when you're in Philadelphia going to WrestleMania, three words come to mind. Quality human beings. Yes. Uh, oh. um, absolutely. Yeah. Hey, you know. <laughs> What? For, Touch a for hand, a Philly, <laughs> For a Philly crowd, it, they were. I think the wrestling crowd is more positive than a than a Eagles crowd or something. Really? Well, well yeah, because Death Row you know, is more. The people right. of Death Row are more positive than Eagles. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a fair point. Yes. <laughs> hey, we're on. We're just gonna get executed one day. How bad could it be? At least we're not. <laughs> oh my! Yeah. So I never knew that you were like a uh, a wrestling fan. Have you been I, one for a long time? I was as a kid. My dad, we used to go to the Cap Center. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we, we watched, that. we went to a gym in a Maryland high school gym to watch WrestleMania 1 on closed circuit TV. It was before even pay per view. Okay. Wow. And, and so, and then I, I guess I screw out of it. And then during the pandemic, I was like, well, they're the only thing putting anything on that's new. <laughs> so let's, you know, and I see some documentaries that have, came across my radar and I was like, all right. You know, I, and I knew of like stone cold and the rock and all these people and right. undertaker, obviously, but I wasn't really paying attention. Uh, and then I said, you know, let's just get, I need, I need a new hobby. Let's get back into this, you know, okay. no, not working out wrestling. Okay. <laughs> and then Justin Slagle and Eric Woodworth, two of my dear friends are super into it. And so we do a little Patreon podcast on our, on our podcast of it laughs count anywhere, which is a play on falls count anywhere, which is a wrestling term that you can pin somebody anywhere. Mike, you can pin them in the 19th. What is row. the term again? Still Give counts. me that again. I, want, I like to learn. What is it? What's the term again? Falls count anywhere is a wrestling term, meaning you can pin them. Not, not just in the ring. You can pin them literally out on the floor in wow. the 20th row. So if perhaps, yes. let's, let's say, the jackpot money is in an aluminum briefcase suspended above the ring. That that, and, is, a, that is an event. Money in the bank. And someone yes. hits someone mm. with a folding chair and they fall mm. out of the ring. Yeah. Folding you chair. could pursue them. You brought them. up the folding chair yes. before Yes, you me. could that's pursue awesome. them. Yes. You could pursue them yes. and pin them in row AA. You perhaps, totally yeah. could. And yeah. that's okay. great for that person who bought that ticket. So <laughs> that, <is>. that's <laughs> like winning the jackpot. You get a pin. You get a pin. So... <laughs> I would say I would love to see a camera on the three of you guys. Just I to would see, too. But more importantly, Rob Mayer. I would like to yeah. see a camera on low key Rob Mayer to see the reaction. I just don't picture you ever <laughs> getting like exuberant. Is yeah. there no? Any, do you I, I got into it. The Undertaker showed up. John Cena, The Rock. I mean, it was it was incredible. We had at one point um, Logan Paul, who's now fighting, and yeah. he it's the he guy keeps, that's going to fight Tyson, right? That's Jake Paul, his brother. But yeah, Jake same, Paul. Logan same, Paul is the brother. The Paul brothers. The same guy, basically. So he um keeps having this. He has this prime energy drink. And he has like these social media people that I've never heard of that keep showing up. He's having this guy KSI show up. So this guy is in this prime bottle costume. He rips <laughs> off his mask. And Justin goes, oh, it's KSI. Nobody cares about KSI. No. <laughs> KSI is black, which is part of this story. The people behind us are black, which is part of the story. They go, no, that's I show speed. Again, somebody I never heard of. Another streamer gamer. That you've got the wrong black guy. So we're <laughs> making fun of Justin. So I just yell, no, it's Kevin Hart. And that so I so, <laughs> on yes. and on. Yes, exactly. And you know, on. Snoop Dogg came out. Oh, look, it's Warren G. You know, let's just <laughs> let's just commit to the bit here. Yeah, now, exactly. Uh, I know she's normally a fan. Was uh Logan is the wrestler and Jake yes. is the the boxer. Yes. Right? And was Mrs. Paul there? No, no, <laughs> that's no. an old joke. <laughs> <laughs> with Mrs. Paul, and she she comes to the uh, you know with a with a ticket you can eat. Yeah, yes. Um, I Mike, I love that Rob brought up show. the Undertaker. There was an era that Mike Didn't we had the Undertaker on the old Don and Mike show. I was going to say we wow. had an era where we had a producer who was very into wrestlers, and anyone within a five hundred degree uh, <laughs> notice uh, oh, access to God. the show would show up in studio. Yeah, and I'm sorry, uh, Rob, I was not. Turbo. Uh, it's okay. It. So, and it was I mean, before my son got into it because I, mm -hmm. you know, I sort of learned about it because I, my son, but The Undertaker was in studio and at WJFK, we had a, a decent sized studio, hmm. not huge, but big. And he filled it up like no guest I've ever seen. And then on a challenge hmm. from Don and Mike, and I'm about the same size as I was then, 
The Undertaker picked me up and <laughs> held me over his head. Yeah, that's pretty and, cool. And I said, "What is the Undertaker now? Like eighty? I would think. Or something I think he's like probably." That. Mid fifties, I'm guessing. Mid fifties, yeah. 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 All right, God, yeah. He'll big dude. He'll Scary soon require dude. his own services. Yeah. Yes, he was. He... <laughs> <laughs> he that's was... a nice claim to fame, though, Rob. You, the, you, you know what? When I told my son that, yeah. he said, "That's really cool, Dad." I yeah. said, oh, that's Rob, cool. do you yeah. remember my favorite? And this is not. This is probably what a second tier wrestler, right? What's not, that? Not one of the. Do you remember my favorite? Tugboat. <laughs> Tugboat. <laughs> And Tugboat, yes. I went to one... Ra- Who did I go with? Trying a large man, I'm assuming. Yes, yes. he was. Yes. <laughs> Who the hell did I go with? I think... This is so long ago. You know what, and- I, Mike? I'm going to guess it was Frank Murphy. Because that would be the kind of thing I don't would remember. Do with Frank. I don't, but it was a long time ago. And Tugboat's thing at the old, as Rob <laughs> mentioned, the other Rob, Rob Mayer mentioned, as... Tugboat at the Capitol Center, which was just this cavernous building. Yeah. You could, you know, echoes everywhere. Terrible place to see a concert. Terrible, terrible place to go, go, period. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. But it was great for hockey. Loved it for hockey. Uh, and you would hear he's backstage, and all you would hear is, <laughs> and, and he's doing that like throughout the arena. I said, that's. That's talk about. That's my guy. Yeah, <laughs> spectacular uh, wrestling e- event. But uh, as far as the, getting back to the gambling thing, yes, you, gambling. Um, so you you'll go up to you. You're not averse to rolling the bones occasionally when you're when you're on there. I, I, it beats being in a hotel room all day, right? Oh no, I'm I'm going to. I mean, the hotel is in the casino, so I'm. No matter what I say to myself, I'm the night's going to end. When they stop serving alcohol, which the, which luckily is is they don't serve it all night there. Well, I know because I won yeah. a jackpot up there one time, mm-hmm. my biggest ever that I've ever won, mm-hmm. and we were going to celebrate, and it was so <laughs> late that we couldn't get a even a bottle of champagne to right. pop the cork. Yeah. And because they're blue laws, my home mm-hmm. state of Connecticut, Backward. with their ye old Ben Franklin BS laws that they have up there, and it was frustrating. So yeah. they shut it down relatively early up there, right? Which is probably a good thing. So, it, so I'm actually, mm-hmm. you know, so I'll, I'll probably. I mean, the shows were not. We're just one Thursday, one Friday, two Saturday. It's, as far as I'm concerned, it's just, that's like not even working. So, right, it's going to be a lot of downtime, and uh, so yeah, hopefully I. Uh, will just not lose if I combine my my money from earning my from my you know who cares it's happening either way. <laughs> Doesn't really now, matter. You mentioned that you're going to be up there with David Keckner. You've got such a great yes. partnership with him. I've seen you two together. It's sensational. But you have him in studio on your podcast coming up, right? Yeah, the DLP agenda we record tonight, Tuesday night. You can actually watch it live on YouTube. Just go to DL, DLP agenda, search it. Uh, and then it'll be available for download on Wednesday. But yeah, he we were in Raleigh, and then we have a Montgomery, New York, on Wednesday, and then we drive to to Connecticut. So he he thought you know just it seemed crazy to drive fly back to L.A. then fly back Wednesday. So he just came flew on my Southwest flight back to Baltimore, and he's staying at the lovely downtown historic Annapolis mm-hmm. and uh, enjoying <clears throat> Annapolis and walking around and relaxing and. That's then cool. we'll drive you know, um, up uh, Wednesday together. That's your so schedule cool. now. Um, how far in advance do you do you usually book? What is it? Do you, I mean, do you have gigs in you know that go through the end of the year? Already? We have gigs, you know. And I talked to Carla, Carla about this because she actually called me to come on the show. What a go getter! Yeah, Carla's she is. doing our, our we're, talent booking. Now. We're going to yep. be in Boca Raton in Naples at the end of in December, into New Year's Eve. We're going to be in Naples, Florida, on New Year's Eve. That's Are sensational. Really? Yeah, off the hook comedy club. And I then we're in Boca out. Raton that that weekend because I think New Year's Eve is on like a Tuesday or some weird. Monday yeah, but night or since Tuesday it's Boca Raton, aren't aren't they doing the New Year's show at five p.m.? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that we're just doing like the Saturday before New Year's, so this oh, is okay. Friday, Saturday, and then New Year's is like a Monday night or something weird middle of the week. Wow! So you do book through the end of the year? That's is, nice. Uh, how, yeah. All right. How exhausted? It, it really. I mean, the road time, which you now have done for multiple years. Mm-hmm. I I know that back in the day when we traveled to affiliates and we would travel what Rob every three four months or so probably yeah that yeah would be when, when we when we were uh, expanding our uh, <laughs> our reach it was something it. we would do I did too I didn't like travel I didn't travel I uh, d- I mean it does uh, do you have systems do you have things you love things you hate that because you are on the road 
How many weeks of the year? Are you on uh, 40, 40, 50 weeks of the year? Uh, we're, we're almost 40. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I have my own little things that I do. But with him, it no, it, it, it can definitely be a grind. And I'm always looking. Like the other day I bought, this is just something simple, but I'm like, I, I'm buying a belt with a plastic belt buckle. Because, you know, even I, I have TSA pre and all the clear and all that stuff. <laughs> but it still goes off. So I still always Live take it, up, it off Rob. and put it on. You know what? This is just going to make it easier. This is just my travel belt. You are a wild animal. And I'm like, all right, that make that that little annoying thing, that's yeah. done. Okay. And ladies, he's yeah. single. Hello. Now, I don't wear that for the show. It's just okay. on the plane. Okay. It's just uh-huh. for the travel, Rob. Uh, but we had a stretch last summer that was particularly hard because it was all the hottest places in the country. Oh, God. We, were in, Na- we started in July, Naples, Florida. We had... Uh, several at uh, Austin and uh, oh. Plano, Texas, Tulsa, <laughs> Oklahoma. And it was seven straight weeks. And by the end of it, we were like, I was so out of it. I had had group texts with my baseball friends and I had organized uh, an Orioles outing. Okay. And here he is. I usually fly home Sunday, but this week we were working on Sunday. So I fly home Monday. Now the gig, the shows, the game's Monday night. And it wasn't until Sunday evening that I realized, oh, wait, I'm not going to make this game. Like, <laughs> like, that's how out of it. I booked this knowing I'm not even going to be. I'm literally going to be landing in the airport at 8 p.m. when the game starts at 630. And I'm, I'm, but I'm the organizer of this. I did this. No, Nobody asked me. I said, this is the date that works for me. And it never worked. And for months, it wasn't going to work. But I was just so like not even oh, with a tail. Right. So I'm like, but we was so hot. We were just so done by that. We're like I'm just right. drained yeah. You're on the road again. I can't. But hey, it's it's, it's you're trying to make a living, Mike. Well, you are. You're a yeah, working are. comedian, right. yeah. baby. Mm-hmm. And that's uh, you know, I mean and, and, and not only that, but also the radio presence and you've been a podcaster, uh, yep. like we have for a very, very long time. And uh and it works. And when it works, you gotta ride it, right? I mean you gotta ride it as yeah. long as uh, mm-hmm. as you can. I mean that's the and way you, it uh, rolls. You mentioned the NFL draft before I believe I'm gonna be doing the first round. Actually, you and your buddy Kirk McKeown. We're gonna be uh having an event in Columbia, Maryland. Uh the Ravens are putting on for some uh, season ticket holders, and we're doing a live coverage Mike, of the Mike will of be the there. first first round of the draft. Oh, the Ravens pick thirtieth, so I'm we'll be doing. Now. I'm that mm-hmm. guy. I'm uh, I'm all in. I am all in, and uh, love the draft. I think the you know being associated as you are up in Baltimore with the Ravens, uh, poised to on paper, would you agree? Have probably the best uh, team. Going in, I mean, the, the the prospects are pretty good for the Ravens this coming. Oh season. no, absolutely! I mean, they they you know they were the most dominant team last year. They've lost some pieces, but they've signed Derrick Henry, so they're Derrick Henry. They're going to be in the mix, absolutely, and they always make excellent draft picks. I mean, they're just elite at that. So I would expect them, no matter where they're picking, even as far back as thirty, and they'll they'll come out of this with three or four players that'll help immediately because like, uh, that's what they do is there any truth to the rumor that they're going to be uh, signing both jake and logan paul to it's, the uh, roster you know what those guys can do it all so <laughs> i wouldn't i wouldn't stop them. you wouldn't think they could do anything but apparently they can do everything so yeah, it's I a fantastic. real rug pull yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. an absolute rug pull <laughs> i'm gonna guess something and you tell me yeah, be totally honest with me because i think of all the places you travel to this is where you were the most happy. Not happy. You were the most excited to be there. And I think that place is Alaska. <laughs> I, <laughs> I've been to Alaska twice in the summer and in the winter. And not the, you know, the November winter. So it's just, it's bad for here, but for Alaska. I loved Alaska. I, yeah. I, I It was like, we went to the this uh, Chinese restaurant that was on like uh, Giners, Drivers, and Dives. And I was like, it's... I'm eating a Chinese restaurant where Guy Fieri was. It's negative 30 degrees out. This seems pretty cool, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I loved Alaska. I liked the snow. And it was we stayed on a base where there was a sign in our our rooms, our little barracks, where it said, beware of this moose. Do not. <laughs> literally, there's a picture of the moose. And it says, the moose is stubborn. <laughs> don't try anything. I'm like, I'm not gonna try anything. Don't I'm like, why anything. don't you kill it? You have guns. I don't understand. Like, if it's dangerous, why? What do I have to do about it? So, well, so I'm know, looking for footprints. I'm literally like, are we gonna, 
Uh, that's how it ends. I die from a moose attack and a well, a stubborn moose. And a I'm stubborn, glad I'm right. glad you survived that. And I, I follow, really enjoyed I your work. His travels around the world. I love it when he yes. goes. Uh, I enjoyed your work as an extra on True Detective when you were in Alaska as well. I thought that was great. When yes, you were in that frozen yes. ball of people. Yeah, so, <laughs> I love that. That really fit the rest of the True Detectives. It a lot really, of people, made sense. listeners of this show, will remember Rob from the Rob and Joe show, and <laughs> your partner. You refer to him still as your partner, mm. Joe. Yes. Uh, how is Joe doing? How uh, how is it going with him and he floats around the baltimore radio scene as well right he's yes on, absolutely he's on the air up there he's on the air he's on wbl on every wednesday night doing a little call in talk radio stuff and and he fills in a lot on the morning show the robin joe show is now the dlp agenda because we've added justin schlegel if, if anyone's confused by that but but joe like you mike has a, a much younger uh, wife very attractive They've, you've both done well for yourself and a couple of weeks Thank ago, you, Joe and uh, Katie invited me to dinner. <laughs> we went out to eat, yeah. and they got there five minutes, five minutes before I did. And the uh, the waitress comes over. She's apparently was very attractive. And Katie says to her, wow, you're stunning. And the waitress goes, well, you're stunning, too. All right. And Katie goes, uh, are you single? Because I have a friend of mine who's showing up, and you're his type. And she goes, no, I'm not. I have a boyfriend. And Katie's like, oh, that's too bad. He's a great guy. And then the waitress says to Katie, right in front of Joe, why don't you just date him? So, oh, wow. It never it absolutely entered her was mind. so much older. Yes, that, that they were together. Even That would be. Couldn't well, comprehend. I got it as recently as last week when I went mm -hmm. to lunch at my kid's school. <laughs> and the teacher from the cafeteria where I was trying to find where my kid was sitting in the cafeteria walks over and said, your grandfather's looking for you. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's worse because that's, that's worse, the yeah. old elderly invisibility thing that yeah. he dealt yeah. with. Uh, with. What's the uh, age separation between uh, Joe and his? Uh, I believe it's twenty-one boy. years. Just like me and Carla. There you go. Mm -hmm. Hey. Wow. Wow. Just like blackjack. Hey, wrap that around <laughs> casino. Yeah. I'm gonna play the the <laughs> Joe and uh, Mike yeah. and Carla and Katie slot machine. That's the one I want. Yeah. Uh, and you're crazy rich white people. <laughs> I never let you get out of here. I never let you get out of here with asking about, uh, you know, you're on the road constantly. It must All be right. a challenge. And I know that you had a long term race relationship that you yeah. are no longer involved with. And uh, what's new uh, in your personal life, Mr. Mayor? Uh, it's, uh, I actually, uh, I'm, I actually hung out with the ex the last night, actually, me and her and Dave had dinner together down in Annapolis. And that's a good, thing. I was going to pay because it's in my town. And then I realized we were ordering more than I thought. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to let him pay. Actually. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so he has more I money than never you, considered so it. Yes. <laughs> no, it's, uh, the it's, intention uh, was very nice. Yes. Yeah. I, I did have a lovely woman in Portland that, uh, started sending me videos. Had a lovely woman in well, Portland? No, that she sounds just, a little dirty right I, no, there. No, didn't you know? have her, but <laughs> I've literally, I, I just ran into a guy that was in Raleigh. It's the same company, and he was down there training, and and I we, I was, I was asked about how she's doing, and then he, he said, he texted, or said he just talked to her, and, and she told me to say, Hel hi, daddy. And I was like, wow, that's that's kind of wow. Hot. So, yeah. yeah. Wow. So I don't even know. I'm, yeah. Perhaps you will <laughs> yeah. have the chance to lay right. with her. I yeah. I've never exciting. wanted to be a dad before, but a daddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, daddy. That's uh, wonderful. So yeah. I think, uh, you know, you're kind of a single, successful guy on the road a lot, uh, enjoying your life, I suppose. Right. Yeah, I, I guess so. I think I'm still better at slots than I am at women, though. So that's <laughs> I not see the very occasional good. post, Rob. <laughs> I see yeah. the occasional post with you. With yes. Three attractive ladies. Yeah, here we all that. are. Great right at the picture. Uh, you know, yeah. I mean, I, I wish you the best. Right of luck. Thank you, Mike. Yes. As far as the ex, <laughs> any chance uh, is that uh, any? You know, if you're still dining right. with the ex, yep. and you were together, how many years total were you together? Uh, just twelve or thirteen. Just wow. a just a wow. little, just a season or two. <laughs> <laughs> a season or two. Well, no, she's doing great. Luck. She's looking great. She's lost weight. I've gained weight. So there you go. That's it. <laughs> As long as the total stays the same. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Mayer, continued success. Thank you, boys. You are Rob, up you're at the greatest. the casino experience in Central Please Connecticut. Do. Go see Rob Mayer uh, this weekend yeah. up there in uh, Mohegan. You. Proud of you, boys. Uh, you guys are still killing this. So proud of you. Thank you very you. much, Father. Chapter 7, whatever that. it is. Keep killing Don't be it, a stranger. Fellas. Come on anytime you want. And uh, you know, tell that brother of yours out in Perum to come by, too. Uh, we'll take a break, and we'll Later. be right back on the Michael Mayer <laughs> Show. Whoa, whoa, everybody. But it
Hey, we got a brand new sponsor I want to tell you about here. Got all their stuff right here for you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's see. I want to show the logo first. That's too small. Uh, all right. It's got defend and repair, Rob. I know you know yes. more about this than I do. Mike, uh, it's a fantastic is- outfit. They're called Mad Rabbit. And I Mad found Rabbit. out something yesterday totally random. Did you know the great and powerful Oz yes. has some ink? And even before he knew of this sponsorship, he was using Mad Rabbit to preserve and protect his tattoos. Do you love it, Great and Powerful Oz? Oh, yeah, it's great. I <laughs> use the bomb. Every oh, the day. bomb, yes, of course. The bomb is uh, right under my. I've got all the stuff right, right yes. here. Did you know 30% of Americans have tattoos? That's right. 30% have tattoos, and 40% of people under 35 have tattoos. Mm. If you have some killer ink, I just found out about uh, this awesome new product uh, that uh, Oz is using and yes. uh, your daughter Julia is using Oh my God, Julia well. loves it, yes. It's our new sponsor, Mad Rabbit. Mad Rabbit is committed to reinventing tattoo aftercare. I didn't even know it was a thing. Mm-hmm. Mad Rabbit creates simple, effective, and natural products that help improve and, importantly, preserve tattoos all delivered directly to your door. It was founded by two friends who love tattoos. Their hero product, the Tattoo Bomb. It yes. revitalizes, replenishes, and preserves tattoo ink with clean and natural ingredients. And it's effective on both new and old tattoos. That's cool. Yeah. So if you got one that might be a little faded, you can put it on there. All skin types. Uh, Julia is using it to put on her tattoos. You know right? what? My daughter, the human pincushion. I got yes. to see her this weekend. She's got uh, dozens of tattoos, it seems. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we were out in full sunlight all day at King's Dominion, she used the the tattoo sunscreen. And she just kept saying, Dad, it smells so good. She loves all the products. You right, know? they've got them. And uh, they've got all the products you need, and uh, they're fantastic. It's Mad Rabbit. All the products you need from a tattoo sunscreen mm-hmm. to soothing gel to tattoo lotion and more. Now is the time to try out Mad Rabbit. Great name for a company. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've preserved over 3 million tattoos, and they've got an exclusive offer that's just for our listeners. So if you're inked up, you go to madrabbit.com. Uh, it's funny with the typo you put on my copy it was madrabbi.com madrabbi.com <laughs> slash that. tmos25 and use promo mm-hmm. code tmos25 that's different than the regular code tmos25 you'll receive 25% off pay attention that's a different code 25% off when you head to madrabbit.com slash tmos25 and use that promo code once again tmos25 and we thank you Mad Rabbit. glad to have you aboard Hey, look, the Kraken laid with a woman in Portland. Yeah. He said, literally, I had, had a woman in I Portland. I know. I didn't know what he was getting at. Very, very interesting. We uh, we root for Rob. We've Rob is the been, greatest. Such uh, a big, nice guy. Big fans. And it was nice of him to come on the show today. Uh, we begin today with uh, what would you pay for a 1993 Ford Bronco? I think you know where I'm going with this. Oh, okay. Well, if it's just a standard one, be a beater. I guess like 400 bucks. O.J. Simpson's infamous white Bronco. It's currently on loan to the Alcatraz East Crime Museum in Tennessee. Do you still uh, have your season tickets? Uh, <laughs> Alcatraz East. <I laughs> nice. Its owners are thinking about selling, and they are hoping to get at least, give me a guess, what do you think they want to get for it? <sighs> uh, 80000 Oh, you're way off. You really? You left out a lot of money. <laughs> oh, you left out a lot you of stuff. You left out a lot of money, Rob. How much? $1.5 million. Oh, that's, you know what that is? I almost said something bad. That's nonsense. They've had offers up to $750,000, so it's not nonsense. Uh, and now that there's renewed interest of all things OJ since he bought the farm, uh, they think they can jack up the price. They claim the plan was to always sell this year because it's the 30th anniversary 30th, yeah. of the chase. But now with OJ's death, uh, it was just a coincidence, and possibly Mike, everything's coming one. up, OJ. <laughs> yeah, very, very exciting. Uh, you know Ted Lasso. You turned me on to that show. Love the show. Love the, the show. The uh, lady that played the owner of the team, Hannah Waddingham. Yes, uh, she's great. She's, she's currently she's, shilling uh, some sort of cookie or cracker, I think. She's very interesting looking. She's beautiful. She's yes. statuesque, and she's different. Yeah. She has a different kind of beauty about her, and I loved her on that Mike, show. Mike, she is... I'll say it. She's a knockout. And I, 
All right. See, now this is a story about a creepy photographer, and now you are being creepy. Oh, okay. Well, is that is that good or bad? Hannah <laughs> hosted an award show for a theater in London on Sunday, and before the event, she was posing for pictures. One of the guys asked her to show some leg, and she kind of went off on the guy. Uh, she said, uh, quote, oh, my God, you'd never say that to a man. And she's got that. You know, that that powerful woman presence yes, about her exactly. anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, and then she says, don't be a dick. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll move off. Don't say show me leg. No. <laughs> then she did walk off, wagging a finger at the guy. She passed him. I'm with her on this. Yeah. That's yeah. creepy, gross. You know, show some leg. You know, whip out your boob. What are you doing there? Come on. Give me a break. Could it's you say it to, to a say, guy, though? Turn right, turn left, do this. Yeah. But wait a minute. If you are at an award show runway. Yeah. And you're wearing, and you're a woman that's got the slit skirt. Yeah. Is that a standard command by photographers? Will they say, show us some leg? Will that, I'm just curious whether that's I, the standard. I have standard. to think it, it's not standard because, I mean, if they want to show leg, they're going to show leg. Mm -hmm. And if they've got the slit, Mike. Well, and you it. do it like at a live show. You do it for the fans every well, time. Well, the last person I yelled it to was Timothy Chalamet. Very exciting. Show us some <laughs> legs. And he was wearing pants. He was. Hannah uh, will be on the big screen this year in The Fall Guy, the movie The Fall Guy. Can you and believe that is getting positive reviews? Yeah, I, well, I mean, it was an average TV show at the very best. Less right? than average. Uh, Mission Impossible will be her other movie. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 2. I guess she'll be uh, on screen with Tom Cruise, which should be pretty interesting. She is a great actress, and uh, a big part, I think, of Ted Lasso is that sort of relationship that was between her and Ted, especially in the first season. I, I wish favorite, her nothing but the best. And I watch this viral clip all the time. It's the clip where uh, they're in the sports bar, the, the local sports bar that supports the team, and the old owner who divorced Hannah, the character of mm -hmm. Hannah, is in there, and Ted gets into a dart match with him. Yes. And you know something? Yeah, you, you ask questions. I'm curious and I ask questions and he darts the perfect game there. So great. Very, very cool. Um, this story lasted a long time. It was tragic. Uh, I don't know whether this will be closure or not, but Hannah Gutierrez Reed, she was the armorer on the set of Alec Baldwin's movie oh, Rust. Okay. Uh, and that's where, uh, unfortunately, uh, Helena Hutchins was accidentally shot. Uh, but. It could have been avoided, and that's why this lady, Hannah Reed, Hannah Gutierrez Reed, uh, has been sentenced. 18 months in prison for involuntary manslaughter. That is the maximum she could have received. Now, you wonder why is she getting the uh, book thrown at her with this? Yeah. Prior to her sentencing, prosecutors said that Gutierrez Reed showed no remorse for the death of cinematographer Helena Hutchins during recorded phone conversations from jail. She allegedly called the jurors who had convicted her idiots and a-holes. She also said witnesses lied and the judges uh, were paid off. The judge was paid off. Uh, still not clear how live rounds ended up on the Rust set. Gutierrez Reed was offered a plea deal if she admitted she brought them, but she turned it down. Her father blames the ammunition supplier and the prop master. Alec Baldwin's involuntary manslaughter trial. Yeah, it's not over yet. I, I was going to say, wh where is it with Baldwin right now? His trial is scheduled to begin in July. He could also get up to 18 months. Do you think that will happen based no. on the fact that uh, she's now been booked? No, I think now that they've got their, they've got a scapegoat. And he's Alec Baldwin. And remember, Mike, we said this. Both of us did when it happened. Yeah. Immediately, Alec Baldwin started to control the narrative. Yeah, and you and know he's got it was, the. Un, it was sorted. I didn't. Yeah, like it, it was. At all. It was unseemly, and he's got the money unseemly, to hire the. That's a better word. Yep, he's absolutely. got the uh, the money to hire the people to finesse this in his favor. Yeah. So you know who knows, but uh, I whether or not Alec Baldwin is at fault at all, the way he handled it to me was dastardly. Yeah, and uh, very little regard for the woman yeah, who lost her life. Exactly. Who looked like a vibrant, beautiful young woman, mm -hmm. and that really just totally sucks. So uh, moving right along here, it doesn't matter if you're a morning person or a night person. Mornings are more stressful than evenings. Do you think I disagree with that because I was a morning man? I, I always find evenings to be a little more uh, stress. I, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a hard. difficult call. Uh, it is hard. I know this is yeah. when I was making the ride into D.C., Mm -hmm. Every morning, right. and that could be anywhere from four, literally anywhere from forty-five minutes to two hours, yeah. with no no explanation of variables. It was always stressful the minute I got in the car 
because I had that hard start time and I had no control of stuff that would happen in between it. Uh, I feel that that was a an unhealthy way to start the day. So it can be very stressful in the morning. A new survey sure. says the most stressful time of the day is 8.15 in the morning. That makes sense. 8.15 a.m. usually involves some combination of getting ready, helping others get ready. That's like my son. Mm. Of course, that for us is 6 a.m., though. Yeah, That's yeah. what time I get yeah. him up. Uh, preparing and eating breakfast, uh, commuting, helping others. My kid's good in the morning, too. He's getting better, which is... Uh, but he's not a morning person, is he? No, because the other morning... He was great this morning. Yesterday, I was awake, and I was like, I don't want to go to school. Both my kids are horrible in the morning, but it's, it's just payback because they were both great sleepers as babies, mm -hmm. which made raising them very easy, but now we're paying the... Well, no, now they're out of the house. Screw them. Well, I got five things here that can help you make mornings go smoother, especially Good. if you have kids. Uh, prepare the night before. Yeah, that's common sense. Uh, establish and stick to a routine. The routines are huge. Routines are absolutely huge. If you yeah. if you wing it with bedtimes and you wing it with morning time, and I'm talking about if you have kids specifically, yeah. uh, the more you're able to turn your mornings into a repeatable mental checklist, the easier it'll be to keep things moving. We and tried it with Julia with the routine, and it was fairly successful. I don't know. We chose a tap dance routine. Yeah. And it <laughs> Thank you. Very good, Shecky. I appreciate that. <laughs> By the way, are you enjoying uh, the routine of uh, Mrs. O'Mara with her? I mean, she is a creature of habit. Very, very much so. And I want to you know thank how... her again for reaching out and the Great and Powerful Oz for helping so many people. Uh, if you have the questions, you go to the Mike O'Mara Show Facebook page. That's where you Mike, get all Mike, do you your, know that like, you know. when you see a movie like Titanic and they would connect, say, the engine room yeah. with the uh, bridge of the ship with a tube mm -hmm. that you could talk through? Right. We could say a lot of cell minutes if we just ran a tube from my house to Carla. Yeah, just because... had a Dixie cup with a string on it. You'd be fine with uh, that one. Yeah. Uh, well, this goes without saying. Get up. And I, well, my kid's 10. We get up before the kids. It says yeah. get up before the kids. If possible, wake up at least 30 minutes before the kids. We're an hour before him. Okay. Uh, Carla was up at five today. Uh, delegate responsibilities. Assign age appropriate tasks to your children. We do too. If we're, That's good. If we're slammed, He's got to take the old doggy out. I did the uh, trash barrels and the dog this morning. And number five, limit or eradicate, I should say, technology in the morning. It's better to keep mornings free from uh, the distractions of the tablets and the computer. We have the news on, the morning yeah, news Yeah, I was going to say, because you know, when I grew up, TV, you didn't have a TV everywhere, so we listened to morning radio for news and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Now we have the TV on. You keep the TV on in the morning? Yeah, absolutely. We, yeah, we uh, watch our uh, little local news, and mm -hmm. it, uh, it's soothing. It's soothing to us. Sure. Well. Uh, over the past 10 years, we have gone from having no idea who was showing up at our doorstep to being alerted that someone was walking up, uh, seeing who they are, what they're carrying, even scolding them if they're rough with a delivery. Yeah. The next innovation... This can't possibly work. The next innovation in doorbell cameras is devices that are armed to shoot someone coming onto your property with paintballs. That's not a lawsuit waiting to happen. There's apparently a Kickstarter on the way for a device called Paint Cam Eve. I don't know why they use the term Eve. Uh, it has the cap capability to fire Mike, paintballs. Mike, that's when the Paint Cam Santa comes. Paint, ban <laughs> paint Cam Eve. Yes. An intruder uh, will be targeted with a... With an, it says an ultra high precision paintball, uh, like a kid who might be vandalizing your house or a neighbor's pet. What? Yay! 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 Can't do that. That's not allowed. It's a smart device with facial recognition, and the paintball firing can be triggered by you. <laughs> This is so funny to me because I remember when you installed a camera and a system at your place in Florida. Yeah. So you could yell at people. I mean, in Maine, you could yell at Maine. people in Maine from Florida. Right. And as far as they only knew, family the members, though, I did it with my sister. I remember. <laughs> It's the best because it was. A, he has a detached garage up there. Right. And I had it right on the top, and so I'd only see people when they're coming in the back deck, and I'm like, "Hi, Kathy. Ah! How, how are you?" This I, I remember the first thing I said. Hello, Kathy. This is God. It was a lot of fun. Uh, anyway, it doesn't just shoot paintball pellets. It can also be loaded with cartridges that can unleash tear gas. No, 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 no. 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 Stick to the paint. Paint Cam Eve is from a startup out of Slovenia. 
and there's no word on how much it'll cost or what the upkeep fees would be to keep it loaded. I don't did you did you play paintball when we went on that brief paintball kick? Yeah, yeah, I did. I was. Uh, did it hurt? I because I was yes. covering it. I yeah. didn't get shot. It hurt because of course I injured myself uh, running the obstacle course. I'm a big faller. I don't know whether uh, I understand, you know, but at least you lost. You kept your watch. It was wonderful. Uh, yeah, I mean, I like paintball, and I think if I was a younger person and didn't trip on roots, I would. Uh, I'd be really excited to play again. There's a guy in Canada named Justin Rabicki, and he's being harassed. This is our final story today. Okay, he is being harassed by endless pizza deliveries. Uh, it's been happening for the last six months. He can't get it to stop. At first, they were coming from a place called Pizza 73. The orders are uh, using not only his address, but also his email and his phone number. They are not being charged to his card, but the delivery drivers do get upset when he says he didn't make the order and sends the pizza back. I can imagine. They're yeah, pissed, too. Wasted. He reported the pizza deliveries to police from the start because he was spooked by how the scammer was using his personal information and orders. He thought maybe he'd be uh, he'd been hacked. The police told him to change his number. He did. That didn't stop the deliveries. He called Pizza 73 and told them not to accept any orders under his name, but then the scammers switched to Domino's. <laughs> If that sounds like dedication, it is. The scammer is also using technology to manipulate the phone number to make it look like Justin is making the call. It sounds like there have been around a dozen orders over the past six months involving more than $1,000 worth of pizza. Justin says he goes, uh, he hopes it's not going to waste, and they're giving it to people in need. He's talking about the pizza. Sure. Justin uh, goes by the alias Rob Mayer, and uh, <laughs> the pizza is being sent by his ex, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Uh, I, I didn't really. He was cryptic about it. It sounds like he might be getting back together with his uh, lady. If they're I hope dinner, so. She's right? wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my breakup. And loves usually, Pizza. Yeah. Well, my breakup's usually the woman's not in the same state. That's just me. But things are going I just, well now. I just stopped payment. Yeah, very excited. <laughs> You've never been broken up. Uh, welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. Did you know Americans pay about twice as much for their wine as the rest of the world? It's crazy. Why? Because laws dating back to prohibition ensure the right of wholesalers to make big margins. Crazy stuff. So listen up. This podcast is sponsored by Naked Wines, a subscription service that seamlessly connects you to the finest independent winemakers on the planet so you get a box of the market's best quality wines for a fraction of the price you'd normally pay in stores. Plus, you can pause or cancel at any time, so just because you've got a summer trip coming up doesn't mean you can't enjoy Naked Wines on your summer trip in the car. No, 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 Mike, when you get back. Joking. I'm sorry. <laughs> what is the matter with you? Just uncork it and off you go. No, I am joking. I'm sorry, Naked Wines. We love you. Yes. Uh, really, they're great on vacation. I love Naked Wines. Never gotten a bad bottle. That is the truth. Uh, go to nakedwines.com slash TMOS and click Enter Voucher in the top, top right. When you get to the website, then you enter the TMOS code for both the code and password, and you get six bottles of wine for just $39.99. Shipping included. That's $100 off, less than $7 per bottle. Cheap, <laughs> cheap, cheap, and good, good wine. NakedWines.com slash TMOS and use the code and password TMOS to grab six bottles for just $39.99. NakedWines.com slash TMOS. Code and password TMOS for $100 off your first six bottles. Cheers. Now, yesterday, Rob comes to the pre-show meeting and yes. he has a story about, and Rob, I don't even know if you're aware of this. What? That there is a family that I have all but boycotted over the years, and that is the Kardashian family. I'm I believe yeah. that good or bad, anybody like me or anybody on the radio or anybody on television or anybody that's an influencer that mentions this family contributes to their empire, and I have always pointedly tried to avoid mentions of the Kardashian. Now, with that said, right. I should also say that I had the pleasure of interviewing Kim Kardashian years ago, and I found her to be a very nice young lady. Okay. Now, if you see some video, she doesn't appear to be that nice a young lady. Or well, perhaps a wonderful lady. I don't know. I don't know why it. I'm rambling. But <laughs> you have a story about uh, a Courtney. particular... Uh, this, is, uh, this is Hannah Kardashian? <laughs> Gladys Kardashian. Okay. And uh, no, first of all, let me say this. I echo everything you say, and I have never watched an episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Good, I just, me neither. 
I've, I've I looked mean, in, but I've never watched an entire never episode. Never even looked in. It doesn't interest me. But I know of them because of their social media presence. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know you're going to accuse me of being disgusting here, but I didn't create this. This is from TMZ. Okay. Now, Kourtney Kardashian, I believe, is is she the youngest? I don't care, and I don't know. All right. Uh, Kourtney Kardashian, this comes from TMZ, just shared, and I, my title on this is This is Disgusting. Okay. Just shared her go-to natural remedy for feeling better. Okay, she uh, recently feeling dropped a better when what you have a cold or you have a hangover. Or well, what? she felt sick is what she said. Vague. She said vaguely felt sick. Did you like to say with your uh, sick at her stomach? She was sick at her stomach, perhaps. Okay. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, she was unwell. And uh, on Instagram stories, she revealed that when she was sick, she just pounded a glass of her own breast milk, and it made her feel better. That's her remedy, and it's a winner. You know, um, I don't know. I, I, I think that the whole idea of that, I know that usually stories about that particular uh, substance, it's really not a substance, it's a naturally occurring yeah. uh, product of the All body. All mammals. Yeah. It's normally not involved in someone who is producing drinking. Now, we've had the stories where, and I want to be delicate about this. Please. Where it can be, uh, you know, some people put it in coffee. Remember, yeah. didn't we have a story like that at one yeah. point? Mm -hmm. And then there are men and women who use it as kind of a kinky thing, you know? I, mean, I can uh, see that. Now, how about, uh, Mike, it turns out... But medicinal, out haven't there been stories about, for example, Madonna peeing on her feet, and that can avoid uh, issues <laughs> with... Uh, I think with, you're looking at a different science there. I there you're looking at acids. This is ingesting your own milk. Now, if you I don't get, think it would hurt you. No, I don't think it's like poisonous or anything. It's but kind of recycling. Did you <laughs> it is. with any of your children, your yeah. thousands of children, yeah. uh, did you have a lactation expert following yes. the birth? As a matter of fact, the uh, for Michael with Carla, the lactation lady was a fan of the show. I wish I knew her name because she also is it Merle? Uh, uh, it's not Merle. <laughs> it's not Merle. <laughs> Merle, hi. It's Mike O'Mara, and I hope you got the help you required. <laughs> By the way, it is my understanding, Rob, and you can corroborate yes. this or not, that the people from a customer service standpoint on this show, yes. The people that requested help yesterday got the best customer service they've ever gotten. Would that be accurate? They have. We have never seen anything like it. The and response. If you have not received a response, uh, the great and powerful Oz has told us he will get to you today. And uh, which is his butt amazing. Off doing it yesterday, which it's, I am eternally grateful yeah, to her. The greatest. And as far as communicating with people, I'm grateful to uh, Mrs. O'Mara for reaching out and doing that. By the way. Uh, for all of you that we were talking about the store the other day a little bit, um, some really cool stuff in the pipeline. Yes. Uh, you don't get happy fans out there. Uh, stay tuned. There's something special coming for you as uh, as well. Getting back to uh, the breast milk, ladies and gentlemen. It's not entirely. It's not <laughs> entirely Courtney though. Okay. Uh, Kim. That's Kardashian. the other spinoff. That's going to be the spinoff re uh, reality show. What's that? It entirely Courtney. I'll watch that. That'll be good. It's, uh, Kim Kardashian took a sip of Courtney's milk in a 2013 episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians, oh, saying that it tasted yeah. like vanilla soy. Oh, God. All right. That, that, yeah. that kicked it over the top for me. And now it's I like really that, uh, you know, they, they write hip at TMZ, right? They got to be cool. Have you ever watched the TMZ show where they're all in a... In a room together. Yeah, yeah. is that? The, it, I find that the <laughs> snarkiest, the nastiest, mean it. And I always think that that guy, what's his name, Harvey? Harvey, guy, yeah, Harvey uh, Levin. Levin. That that's. I was going to say Weinstein. That's uh, don't right. you always think Harvey's trying to be young? Well, when he's, he's not like eighty-six. Young. He's like he was 80. old thirty years ago with his Stanley it. Cup. Uh, I always right. look at that show and think that show takes more time to watch than it does to produce. That's how yes. sloppy it is. However, mm -hmm. I do love the hip writing style of TMZ because now they're calling breast milk hot BM action. <laughs> wow. All right. That's a that's another one. That's another one that <laughs> no. we will uh, have there. Thank you. And just remember that Sorry. Chloe got her, uh, I guess, her male counterpart, mm -hmm. uh, Scott Disick, 
uh, to drink her bre- her breast milk for uh, four hundred dollars. So. Well, thank you, and uh, for all. The so people, that's disgusting. For all the me. people breakfasting out there, we uh, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts from the uh, Mike O'Mara show. Hope you're enjoying your uh, muffin this morning. <laughs> thank you very much. We'll take a break. By my favorite wretch. Yeah. Uh, wretch. That's the name of that sound effect on my board. <laughs> we'll take a break. Come back right here on the Michael Berry Show. Whoa, 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 whoa. This portion of the program, ladies and gentlemen, is brought to you by our friends at 4 Wellness. You can fuel your peak performance with 4 Wellness, the ultimate functional food brand. 4 Wellness was founded by Phil Mickelson and renowned performance coach Dave Phillips. It's a game-changing performance coffee supplement. You can elevate your brew with just one scoop for enhanced focus, reduce caffeine jitters, increase collagen, and fat-burning support. For wellness makes it easy to uh, integrate high-quality functional ingredients into your daily routine. Plus, with a risk-free 60-day money-back guarantee, what do you got to lose, huh? Mm-hmm. Uh, hey. Unleash your full potential with 4 Wellness because your body and mind deserve the best. If you drink coffee, it's time to give 4 Wellness a try. Head to 4wellness.com slash TMOS and use the code... For 25% off your order. Again, that's 4wellness.com slash T-M-O-S for 25% off. And make sure you use that promo code so they know we sent you. And that is T-M-O-S. Yes, Rob Spiewak. You know, I know we've got time for a short break here, and I meant to tell you this before the show. I've solved one of your problems because it's one of my problems, too. All right. Um, I hold in my hand the Apple Magic Mouse, which is an effective mouse device except for one thing is that if once it loses its charge in the old days the magic mouse ran on two double a batteries so if it Uh lost its charge you just replace it but to charge it you have to plug in to this little slot on the bottom meaning that while it's charging you cannot use it at all all. so if you forget to charge it i try to remember Mm -hmm. but mike this has happened to both of us we're doing show prep and our mouse shuts down because it ain't got no battery and we're we're crippled. We can't do anything. Well, what do so, you? What information are you giving me that I don't? I'm giving know? you the setup, Mike. Oh, I solved the problem for nine dollars. I went on I went on Amazon and I bought this, which is a knockoff mouse that uh, is not built by Apple, that allows you to charge it from the front. So it never loses its charge, and when it does, you can use it while you're using it. You've made me happy, Mike. I keep it fully charged and in my desk. So if at any time my Apple Magic Mouse loses its its mojo, yes. all I have to do is go into my desk so and turn it on. This is where you know, this company that's uh, you know, been revered for so long, they have an occasional design issue that is but a this complete is flaw. But this is so majorly bad. And uh, was it made in China, the mouse? China. All your data has been breached if you're using that particular. <laughs> no, that's mouse. not true. That's the way it's it not works. True. With that. But Mike, now I, I'm I'm running two mice, and I I don't know if, you know, I'm not as computer oriented. Oz, is it mice or mouses? I he believe it's just mouses. Okay, I'm running two. I'm running two also. <laughs> I'm running two mouses, and Mike. Did you for, watch Oz's video for uh, how to help people? Uh, you know, get. The, I didn't. Uh, the I saw that show. it was up there. It's fantastic, <laughs> spectacular. Well, that's good, Rob. Thank but you. But I mean, uh, I know this is something that. that that gives you a oh, hassle. Since we're on the subject, yeah, and, uh, we'll we'll go in this direction. Since you brought it up, um, you have a Whirlpool refrigerator. Am I right? Yes, love do, it. Do you have a Whirlpool refrigerator with a water dispenser? Yes, love that too. Do you have a Whirlpool refrigerator that has that round number four clear drop filter up in the upper right hand corner? I don't know the number of the filter, but yes, it is a filter one. in the upper right corner. Where yeah. do you get your water filters? We actually subscribe for them subscribe? on Amazon, so they automatically arrive. Yes. Uh, do you get the? Uh, I think it's like Clear Drop or something like that. There's the the, the average price. Would I be right and say uh, if you buy these retail? Right. Fifty nine dollars. Am I yeah, right about it's around, that? It's around fifty bucks. I think. Are you uh, aware of the fact that uh, I will be having one come to two come to the Omera household today that are com- comparable to those two of them. Two of the $59 filters for $26 American dollars. Do you care to mention where you got them? 
I'll do it when they get here and I test them out. I'll, okay, I'll my, God, I'll that's fantastic. Because, you know, I've become... Isn't that absurd? Isn't that... I mean, absolutely obscene. Ugh. Something you have to change like three, four times a year. Yeah, and uh, I, I and hate that it tells you... 59 bucks. I hate that it tells you to change it. Yes, because that, that's like it. Oh, I hate it. I hate it. I, and it's important, though, because, you know, Mike, when it is clean, that Whirlpool does dispense great water, and the ice is sensational. It is a, I believe, that it is, it is an efficient water treatment thing that you put into your refrigerator. But I, yesterday in particular, I said, oh, my God. And, and it's crept up over the years, yeah, too. It it's has. It's inched up ever so. And now, you know, $60 and change for... That water filter, it was, a, and then I said, and I look online, and this is where you, when you do a dive on this kind mm -hmm. of stuff, you have to be careful because it really does look like. Oh, I know. The I know. knockoffs are really knockoffs. Mm -hmm. Like they filter it with mouse droppings or something like that. You know, that it's just not, Coffee filters. I know, right? Mike. It's used uh, coffee filters inside. It's, That's it it's is got. really dicey when you buy an off-brand filter like that. I, I looked into it for my liver, and it just... <laughs> It was it's a not small good. one, an implant that you it put was. under your skin. Also That's made it. in China. <laughs> <laughs> it's just under the surface. With That's that. all. Yeah. No, I will. Uh, I think they're going to arrive today or tomorrow. I'll bring them in on the show. I'll do an unboxing right here on Can't the show. Wait. And I'll let you know. And I'm not stepping on any toes here, right? I mean, no. it is what it is. It's just, and I would love to know, and you can maybe, in your sneakiness, yeah. maybe you could do a dive and you could find out if. The Whirlpool water filters or the water filters they use for all these are, are yes. owned by Big Refrigerator. Because I bet they are. They I might bet the be owned by people Mike, that make the filters. They might them. be owned by Big Filter. Maybe Big Filter owns the refrigerator companies. Either or, I would like to know because uh, here at the Michael Mara Show, with uh, two grifters like Rob Spiewak <laughs> and myself, we are yes. your consumer advocates, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, look, it worked for Printer Inc. I was going to say, uh, filters as well, what if right? you put printer ink instead of the filter? You can oh. put a, yeah, a magenta that, cartridge imagine, in there. Well, you don't have to drink the water yourself, but imagine the hilarious uh, moments that will ensue when uh, you give it to your family and watch the black <laughs> rolling out of there. They all look like that movie with Danny DeVito as the penguin. Uh, oh, we'll take a break and uh, return uh, with the flip side, ladies and gentlemen, Yay. right after this. Let's talk about our friends at Legacy Box. Do it. Just like us. You're going to love it. Spring cleaning upon us, ladies and gentlemen, but there is one meaningful box you don't throw away when cleaning out your closet. It's the box filled with your family's videotapes and photos. Preserve them for eternity. Legacy Box makes it easy. Load your Legacy Box with your old tapes, film, and pictures and send it back. <laughs> I'm not talking about Merlot. Uh, you'll get it back on a thumb drive or on the cloud. Ready yes. to watch and easy to share. It's so simple. It's like magic. Preserving your family's heritage is the only way to ensure your legacy is safe for generations. Join over one million families that have trusted Legacy Box. Don't wait. It's simple, affordable, and they take care of everything. Thanks to Legacy Box, all of our family's histories can live on. Digital clarity, no degradation. It's wonderful. Uh, you're protecting your memories. You can check that off your list for your spring cleaning to-do list with Legacy Box. Visit LegacyBox.com slash TMOS to shop their $9 tape sale. That's LegacyBox.com slash TMOS to unlock this incredible offer. Thank you, Legacy Hello. Box. Look, preserving there's the tattoo heritage. machine. Yeah. And as, uh, as my family likes to say, Rob, preserving the heritage because it's not, it's not hate, it's heritage. That's right. Uh, I know, Mike, your family is uh, interested in saving photographs and wallpaper. Mm -hmm. These are all the important things for your family. Absolutely. Very, very exciting. Okay, CBS, you're not fooling anybody. Yeah, they're, they're, they're catching it this week, man. They well, are, yeah, but wow. you know what they've done by catching it, so-called? Mm -hmm. Is they're re-airing the Billy Joel concert this in its entirety this Friday night, which sounds like a nice gesture until you realize what they've done is they've got content they've already paid for that has been talked about. I don't think it was on purpose, but I do think it was opportunistic. It was trending all day yesterday. Now, so when they get you all say, this let me interrupt you for a second, okay. because when you say opportunistic, are you saying that the reacting to the crisis by airing it again was opportunistic or the way it was they're planned all along? It was not planned all along, I don't think, but okay. the way they're attacking it is... 
they were on everybody's mind yesterday because mm-hmm. this special was cut off. The first thing they said is you can go stream it if you pay for our service. And then they reveal, wait, we're going to roll it again this Friday in prime time. Friday night, historically one of the softest nights for television viewing. Now they've got a campaign for free that's driving everyone to it. And they already own it. So it's free. And they'll believe me, the commercials will still be there. They're going to make a killing. It's like a, a recycling content. Can I give you my two cents Please. Uh, on this? And I, I welcome your opinion on this, Rob, mm-hmm. because uh, you're the concert guy. You've seen Billy Joel in concert. The demeanor. I watched uh, just a little bit of the right. streaming of it because I love Billy Joel's music. Sure. I really do. Did you? Watching it, because I know you watched a little bit of it yeah. as well. Did you get the sense of, I don't want to say phoning it in, but of low energy in that uh in Yeah, that and I see that as him being older. Okay. And I, I also so. see that as him being in the the reason for the concert. It's his 100th night as a, as a resident there. Yeah. And I mean, at least if you're touring, you've got a different city, a different venue. Yeah, I get it. I it's a it. beautiful venue, but how many times? Mm-hmm. Uh, but I did find this piece of tape that I found extraordinarily entertaining. If okay. you're peeved about Billy Joel, I'm very sorry. But this is how it aired on a local affiliate on the East Coast here. If you're watching the Billy Joel concert, it all builds up to Piano Man, and he's singing it. Live from CBS 4, this is was. your news now. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I mean, God, really, so cbs uh, It you is know a cbs The low energy question you answered, though. Yeah, imagine, I would imagine that would, uh, you know. It, He's not low energy in the songs. The song performances in, are great. And we do 3,000 shows. We come in and there's something different every day. Every day. Every single day something changes. There is a dynamic that changes. The very fact that even if you're doing a standard talk show, which would be like a Letterman and stuff, where you get uh, repeat guests and you're Mm -hmm. doing bits and stuff, you never know what's going to happen. On this show, on a podcast, where this is happening every day, it's even more so. Mm -hmm. You really don't know what's going to come your way. And the surprise is some of the most joyous moments we have. You know, like a principal member of the show just leaving. It happens. Uh, Go ahead. Continue, please. Thank you. Uh, Mike, Zoom, you know, COVID has changed. I throw you for a loop Maybe a little. little Yeah, you know, (laughs) and that's fun, too, isn't it? (laughs) Yes, it is. Yes, it is. For me, it is. Uh, COVID is uh, not what it was, but people are still working from home. Look at us. Right. And people are doing Zoom meetings and Zoom calls. Mm -hmm. This lady, this is, to me, so funny, and I think you'll like it, too, because I'm the owner of two dogs. Uh, She told her kids to be absolutely quiet during the Zoom meeting. Okay. Okay. So the kids are behaving, but no one gave the memo. No one gave the memo to Fido. So I heard you guys have good news. So I have some good news too. Listen to him drink water. So if we go down um, below to um, Chris, uh, Christine, your questions earlier about <laughs> the dog just it, continually drinking. Water. I'll play I some. I need to figure out who. <laughs> By the way, that was Carla. In the background there, uh, doing the uh, the Zoom meeting that she was having with one of her people. We get the barking. Oh, he barks his ass off when somebody comes to the door. Oh, yeah. I mean, Even but Daddy. I just, I, I love that. The fact mm-hmm. that it's just lick, lick, lick. And we have a word for that, actually, in our family. When a dog is drinking water that hard, it's called pat him, pat him. Pat them, pat them. Yeah. Because no, they go, pat them, pat them, pat them, pat them, pat them. It That's could be worse. It could have been uh, Sebastian, you know. That's still the greatest dog tape I've ever heard. And we made it ourselves. Rob yeah. made that with his dog. Isn't that cool? I use surveillance equipment, as yeah. Liddy would say. And Very Mike, neat. let us close with this. Mm-hmm. Uh, rat trouble in New York City. Really bad. Getting worse. Okay. And uh, at least they're able to combat it. In its war on rats, New York City now plans to deploy rodent birth control that comes in the form of salty pellets, which will hopefully be more effective than their last idea, teeny tiny condoms. <laughs> And they bought very those at the Irish store. The Irish store. Very <laughs> nice. Yes. Here you go. Yeah. <laughs> Tired of finding those magnums. Tired. Tired of seeing those oversized things that just don't fit you. For God's sake, you could bring a family of eight in there. Uh, yeah, welcome. Welcome to the Irish Heritage Store, where we give you teeny tiny leprechaun size. 
condoms for and you. And remember, Mike, it's not hate. It's heritage. It's heritage. Yes, sir. There's our flag right over there. And, of course, the gold harp right next to the teeny, teeny, tiny condoms. Hey, we'll be back. want to thank Rob Mayer. <laughs> yes. Rob will be up at uh, the Mohegan Sun Casino Hotel in Ledyard, Connecticut, the Central Connecticut. Big casino up there with David Kechner. Great show. Funny show. Coming to a city near you soon. Thank you to Rob Mayer for joining us. RobMayer.com, Mike. I just want to mention RobMayer.com. Check out his podcast, too. He likes Check that. it out. And uh, the Mike O'Mara Show Facebook page up and running. Any questions you have about the RSS feed, about getting the bonus shows, about getting on track with everything we offer to you, go to the Mike O'Mara Show page on Facebook for any questions you might have, and people will get back to you right away. For Rob Spiewak, this is Mike O'Mara saying so long, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs> Want more? Make sure you check out the Mike O'Mara Bonus Show. Get it at MikeOmeraShow.com. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. Oh, you left out a bunch of stuff.